Oh, Chief, nice to see you, mate. How's pre-season gone so far in your first uh, your first pre-season at Wellington Phoenix as a head coach? Yeah, it's been going uh, very well. Uh, we have our ups and downs. Uh, today, I was a little bit frustrated with the boys. I thought, uh, in terms of the consistency where they've been out for, for the whole pre-season, um, I thought today it dropped off a little bit. I'm not sure if that's because of the game that we're playing uh, on Sunday and uh, maybe a little bit of nerves or uh, just um, maybe just their mind's more focused on the game than, than at training. So, but apart from that, it's been going really well. Is that something that you um, let them know about? Well, I let them know about it today. Uh, I have high standards. The, the, the coaching team has very, have set a very high bar. Uh, and we feel that whenever they're short, um, that they need to understand that um, uh, they need to maintain that at all times, not just, uh, you know, three sessions and then, you know, they have two ball sessions. They need to maintain it at all times. So they need to have a good baseline. Yeah. You told us um, when you got the job that you had a certain style of play that you were wanting the Wellington Phoenix men's side to play. How have you gone about reinforcing that style to them and, and making sure that you know they're doing what you're asking of them yeah so that, that's a it's a it's a difficult question to answer simply uh, but we basically restructured all our uh, training um, even um, in terms of value and goal setting uh, just the culture around the team um, I found that it was important that I put my own brand the staff put their own brand on the uh, on the style uh, and the way we wanted to move forward. So we basically started from scratch um, and we've carried on some good things that were implemented previously, um, but uh, the, the main focus is um, also even, even the mentality, the focus on having more of the ball, being more positive, uh, pressing a lot more. Um, so it's been quite challenging, but also very rewarding when it, when it works. What sort of reaction have you got from the players, particularly the ones who are used to playing the old system or the, or the previous system, shall we call it, and are being asked to play something different? Have you got a good positive reaction from them? No, no, the reaction, the, the buy has been very good. Uh, I feel that the, um, the existing players um, also have been playing the system for, for quite a long time, the, the old system, uh, and what was needed was uh, just maybe... I always say to my players, it's evolution, not revolution, uh, and the evolution is based on what we did before, but with a with a new with a new mix, new ideas. Um, those existing players uh, so far have enjoyed it immensely. They, the feedback is very positive. I feel that uh, even though we've had limited games, um, for the moments that we put it together, it looks really good. Uh, the frustrating part is, uh, is the, the fact that because we haven't had a huge amount of games it's been harder to, to get where we need to um, in anticipation of the A-League season. You remember um, Offie said that quite a bit, it's hard to get games against Australian opposition because of you know geographical reasons. Yeah. Is it is it um, something that is you know fixable or, or can you can you do alternatives that will um, get you almost the games that you need, the game time that you need? Well there, there, there's two things right, so the, the the lack of games against uh, quality opponents really comes down to cost, right? And you know, living on the other side of the uh, the Tasman, um, there's a, it, it can be quite an expensive exercise. Uh, so, in a, taking that to uh, to effect, I uh, when I took the job, uh, one of my main focuses was making training uh, very competitive. So, uh, training was uh, there's always a punishment reward outcome. Uh, but also, um, we, w we wanted to create an atmosphere where it was game realistic all the time. Um, so we have a lot of internal games now. Our training's more focused towards games than it is more about training. Um, and that's to compensate for that factor. Um, and to be fair, the internals that we have are quite intense and they've probably been more intense than the games that we've played so far. That's no disrespect to the, the teams that we've played so far. It's just when when you play against teams uh, that, that don't have that same energy or that quality, uh, what tends to happen is that the your standard kind of drops the match where they're at. Um, I'm not sure if that's inexperience on our part or a really good team can then, you know, really dominate and and, and increase that uh, that quality. So, um, but because it's a new system, I, I, I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, it's going to be very up and down and hopefully be right for the season. And this is probably a difficult question to answer as well, but what will the Phoenix look like? Uh, you know, what will a, a, a fan of the Phoenix, what can they expect to see in terms of the way you want to play the game? So my my main focus is uh, on command of the game and, uh, and command of the game means that we need to have the ball the whole time. 
Um, and it also means that when we don't have the ball, that in order to establish that command, that we need to press and win the ball as quickly as we can uh, and regain it so we can get into, um, into a positive part of the pitch and get rewarded. Um, so what you'll see is a lot of combination football, a lot of emphasis on keeping the ball, a lot of emphasis on uh, distorting the opposition and finding the space uh, for our four attackers. Um, and what you'll also see, and it'll be a gradual build-up. It won't be. It won't be. Uh, you won't see the end product on Sunday. But yeah, uh, what you'll hopefully see is that uh, the defensive effort will be related more to towards a press than it would be more of a block. Um, Obviously, there'll be times where the players are gassed in the games and they have to block, defend, and so on. But there'll be more of an emphasis on playing, of keeping the ball in the attacking uh, side of the half. You enjoying it? Oh, I love it. Every day is great. It's always new problems, and you know, I've got to come up with some uh, solutions. The staff uh, and I, we every day we, you know, we, we have two meetings a day and we discuss everything from player welfare to how training is going. Uh, we look for, we try to uh, put a foot one step ahead uh, in the future just to make sure that we can predict any any sort of, um, you know, uh, issues that might come about. I, mean, I feel like we've got that process down pat at the moment. Every club at the moment is having their own challenges. You know, I hear that a lot of clubs are having uh, some financial restrictions and, you know, uh, there's more emphasis on uh, young players coming through. So every club's got the same challenges and I think it's the one that comes out on top is the one that can deal with all those those issues. Just a final one for me. Um, you still got an import spot open. Are you, are you still looking to fill it? At the moment, um, I would say we've kind of cooled off in terms of bringing in another foreigner. Uh, I think that what we have available uh, uh, in terms of the centre backs, I think they can fill that role adequately. Um, and it's also a really good opportunity for us to, you know, give these younger players a real opportunity. Um, and I think it ties in well with what the club wants to do as well by producing their own players. And I think we said that, um, you know, when I first got the job and uh, the last couple of press conferences that the focus will be on developing Kiwi players through our academy uh, and through the club. Looking ahead to, to Sunday in Melbourne City, they had a good cup run against them the last two years. Are they a similar kind of opponent, one of the still standard bearers of the A-League? For formidable opponents, they've recruited well. Um, they've got some outstanding players. Uh, Lecky, McLaren still up front. Um, they've recruited well locally with Antonis and uh, Lapane. Uh, and uh, Steve Vukarkovic, I think, is you know, one, of the, uh, one of the best sixes in the league. Um, he showed that last year with us um, and he's gone there and he's going into a really good environment. Um, they're going to be up there. I, I can't see them not being in the top two for, for this season. Um, the expectation is always high there, they have good quality football. So for me it's a great opportunity to play someone uh, that we, we emulate to be, uh, if not better. Um, so for us it's a, it's a really good uh, way to see how our pre-season is going. And we saw a number of players from the academy and the reserves promoted for that first game, given the injury situation. If you can update us on that, are there going to be some more opportunities on Sunday? Uh, yeah, so I spoke to Philip Rollo yesterday about this. Uh, we had, up until last week, we probably had seven out of our uh, 17 players ineligible um, uh, through injuries. So Sutt's uh, ongoing a problem with his knee. Ben Old has been managed in terms of his loads with... Uh, uh, his injury, uh, Mo Alte has been out for six weeks uh, due to a groin strain um, and we've had a suspension and then we've had a couple other boys with niggles and sickness so um, we've, we've struggled in, in terms of getting uh, a starting 11 but I feel confident for the game that we'll be, a, we'll be fine and the young boys that will be on the bench will, um, will give us some value and a good opportunity as well. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why players have been held back from the under-23s and they yeah, join the probably master. Yeah, more, more than what Bayes uh, probably wanted. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, it's more circumstance. But once again, on the flip side, you know, someone like uh, Isaac Hughes gets the opportunity to, uh, to travel. Uh, and he'll, um, you know, if he gets some game time, a good opportunity for him to take a claim for a contract. So, you know, there, there's a host of other boys that are in that, in that similar, in that similar mould. But they've been going great at training. I've been really ha happy with their output. Um, one of the things that um, that has happened over the last two months, all those boys that have been involved from day one have had significant improvement. 
Uh, sometimes they don't see it because the, the progress is gradual, but it's actually been immense in terms of a two month period. So a lot of those boys, I would happily say that are, are close enough um, to getting minutes in the A-League uh, if given the opportunity. So that's, that's a really good, it's a really good way forward because that also gives us a basis of players that we can rely upon uh, as opposed to bringing other players from elsewhere. And David Ball missed the first game against Peninsula Power and has been sick, but is he yes. likely to travel? I think he'll be available to travel. Whether he starts or not is a different question, so we'll assess that. It's an ongoing, uh, it's an ongoing um, situation. Uh, for me, as much as I want to start him, I have to assess uh, his welfare um, and going into the season. I'd rather him be fit for the season and firing because he's a very important player for us, uh, as opposed to maybe risking him when maybe the risk isn't warranted.